Hello, everybody in Facebook land. We are live. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Jeeva Salerno. I am the founder of Over 40 Fearless and Free. And this is another fearless conversation with Carrie Lee tonight. Carrie Lee is the alchemical artist. And I'm super excited to have her here with me tonight and to share her with you because she is so amazing. And it's almost like a dream come true to have her here. Um, so quickly a little bit about me and the group and then I'm gonna share Carrie Lee with you all. So if you are watching this from outside of Over 40 Fearless and Free, just know that Over 40 Fearless and Free is a group of 10,000 plus women around the world who support each other in becoming their best selves. Uh, we inspire women to recognize their own power, potential, and purpose in order to create a life that they love. And we are creating the leaders of tomorrow and today. So that's over 40 Fearless and Free. I'm Jiva, the founder, and I am a writer and a yoga enthusiast. I have a background in both science and art and all kinds of groovy stuff and <laughs> I am excited to share Carrie Lee, the alchemical artist, with you today. Carrie Lee and I have known each other. How long do you think it's been? It's a couple of years. It could be three or four now. I'm thinking three or four. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Well, yeah, and I will share that. I don't even remember exactly how we met, but I think what happened is that I saw a piece of Carrie's artwork somewhere and I looked at it and I followed it to her and read about her and I always said I want to be friends with that person <laughs> like literally I said I want to be friends with I want this person in my life and so I reached out to her and friend requested her that's the way I remember it <laughs> I think you're right that's pretty much how I remember it too yeah it was and then, kind of random and then, but not and then Carrie shared with me about this amazing process of intentional creativity that we're going to tell you a little bit about. Um, that's part of her past, part of my past, and uh, makes up us both. Uh, and we, well, that just really inspired me, the intentional creativity. I learned about that and I got involved in it. And yeah, so we'll hear a little bit about that. But Carrie Lee, tell us a little bit about yourself just briefly, because we're going to go into, you know, what makes up Carrie Lee's past shortly. Okay. okay. Well, I am, um, I'm located in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay Area. I am a mom. I've got a long business and entrepreneurial career start. Oh, we're not going to talk about the past. Anyhow, that started long ago. And um, currently what I do is I have created a school called the Self-Discovery Wisdom School. And I am all in on this. It's really the culmination of my life's work, but especially the last 12 years. And I'm just thrilled. I feel like I found my mountain. I get to set up my resort on, you know, it's just, um, it's wonderful. Yeah. And the self-discovery school is so amazing. I'm going, you know, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but I just want to say that I am so thrilled to be involved with this self-discovery school and to be able to share it with this group. I, I get a little emotional almost because it's just it's just so um, so amazing, and I'm going to share more why you know a little towards the end. But yeah, I'm really excited to talk about the self discovery school. It's all about what I'm about, and really excited that Carrie Lee is doing it, <laughs> not me. My goodness, I don't get that. She's carrying the ball. <laughs> like, so excited. But let's go into what makes up Carrie Lee. So tell us a little bit about 
where you grew up, Carrie Lee. Okay, I grew up in Davis, California, the University of California, Davis, with a scientist father and a nurse mother, uh, who was also a part, partly an artist, and um, it was a good, good childhood. Uh, but at 14, I was told no more art, time for math and science. And so that was kind of a pivotal moment in my life of um, losing that part of me. But I had a good childhood, just kind of lost that part of me. How old were you when your art was shut down? 14. Okay. 14. I actually have a memory though of when I was four and getting the wrong impression that what I was doing was wrong. So I, you know, for me, I had a 35 year block, what I call a case of creative constipation that I remember starting as young as four years old. Yeah. And so why I, did this, this was coming from your parents, right? Unintentionally, they, it right. really was all so unintentional, but yeah, that's where it came from. And, you know, I loved and respected my parents and they didn't even mean what was, they didn't know what was happening. You know what I mean? And um, quick story on, on the, the four-year-old, make it really quick. I was camping with my family. They were probably 20 feet away. I was sitting on the floors for kind of one with it all and love, loving it. And I was creating a castle out of whatever was on the floor of the, the, the forest. And as I remember it, my mother came up and kind of startled me, put her hand on my shoulder and pulled me out of it and said, what are you doing? Well, what I was doing was building this castle with deer poop. It was the perfect round little building material, right? And so I saw it in pastel colors at Easter. I mean, like I was in my creative element, but of course being a good mom, she made me go wash my hands, right? So that was the signal I got that, oh my gosh, I was doing something dirty when I was in this beautiful place. And so yeah. the, it took, a, it took a, a hypnotherapy session for that to come out, but it became very obvious that that was my first very unintentional message that it wasn't a good place to be. Did yeah. you, after that, did you try a few times and I shut did. down? No, I was very prolific uh, until I was about 14. One contest, I would make homemade cupcakes and decorate them beautifully and sell them to the neighborhood moms. I was a creative entrepreneur as a kid you know, which is what I am now. In the middle, yes and no, I was that. So no, it, I was really quite prolific in every arena until I was, till it was time to get serious about life and my destiny. Yeah, it's too bad that we get serious, right? <laughs> serious is, it's uh, overrated. <laughs> yeah, well, and times have changed, you know, back, back then, creativity didn't have the value that it has now. Like so much is automated and, and you know, there's IT and there's technology, which is not automated, that creativity has become the rare element and the critical element, right? But back then that was before all that. So it was different it was practical really. So times have just changed. Yeah. And so somewhere around 14, it was time to get serious. And you ended up in the telecommunications industry for a while? Yeah, I did all kinds of things, but basically I was in sales and marketing um, in the corporate world. I opened a coffee house and a coffee micro roastery in the specialty coffee industry for a while. Yeah, that was sort of my creative venture um, for uh, six or 10 years, something like that. Um, but yeah, I was in the corporate world and it didn't fit. It was like I had to put on a suit of armor that rubbed me raw, you know, it just like, it wasn't me. but we're women, we can do these things, we can make it work, we can push our way through it. And I did until my life kind of implode. No, it did implode. And that was my big awakening moment when it was like, I'm not gonna live like that anymore. I'm gonna choose my, my own joy and my gratitude and my excitement and inspiration and figure out that what is and find out who that artist is that left when I was 14 and what she has to say. Absolutely. So, it, yeah. Did you feel like you were sort of suppressed during this time? There was a part of you that was just not expressing, right? For a long time? Yeah. That's the crazy thing is I didn't. I didn't until all of a sudden I did. And I would say later, like 10 years or so ago, I really felt this bubbling up inside of me of this creative energy that if I did not get it out, I was gonna implode. And also right. I just knew I was literally gonna die an unhappy woman if I didn't discover that part of myself. And so that began my quest of self-discovery, right? Um, 
and I kind of became a junkie at it. You know, I just tried all these different ways and these different methods. And then I found this intentional creativity, which is a beautiful um, way of processing your inner wisdom and getting insight and uncovering stories that you didn't know were there and getting clarity and letting go of blocks and all that beautiful stuff. And you don't need to be an artist to do it. That's the best thing. And that's why I was able to become unblocked is because you cannot make mistakes. And so I went from being this very tight artist who took classes. I would always take classes in art. So I learned actually how to be an art teacher by taking a million classes throughout my lifetime. But I give me a blank canvas, I freeze. You know what I mean? So this, this method broke me free of that. And now like this painting that's behind me, my favorite way is just to squish painting on a canvas and wipe it around and see what happens. <laughs> Completely opposite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that so many women can probably relate to that feeling of getting to a point where you, your life just doesn't work and it, it feels yeah. like you have to do something. I got to that point in 2000, the end of 2011, and I did an experiment to change my life uh, that kind of started all of this. Um, it was the beginning of Over 40 Fearless and Free. But yeah, I got to the same point of like, I'm going to implode or explode or something if I don't change my life. So uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of women can relate to that. And they can also probably relate to that feeling of being like stuck and kind of trapped almost. So right. I know that that's, uh, that's the kind of women that you like to help and me too, because we've been there. Right. Um, it's that a little tell us a little bit more about intentional creativity yeah okay um and just to touch on that it's that deep gnawing feeling that there's something more but you don't even know where to locate it right but you just know there's got to be more than my current experience of this life that i'm having and it's not that it's a bad life even necessarily you just know that there's more yeah so intentional creativity that is basically art with purpose and intentional, of course, is when we do things with intention, it turns out differently than if we're not paying attention. So you're putting the purpose into something. And this can be as simple as making soup, right? That can be a creative act. It doesn't have to be drawing or painting or something like that. So the person who creates a garden, builds a garden and puts it in the right place where it gets the best sun and grows organic vegetables and tends to it with love and care and watches those, nurtures those vegetables and all that and harvest them when they're, they're just right and they're ripe and then makes the soup with you know organic herbs and vegetables and all that and serves that soup that is a completely different experience than opening a can of soup right it's rich it's that it's got depth to it it's got meaning yeah absolutely and so kind of the theory is to have an intention for every piece that you're working on is bringing you know an intention to it so um, you know, the founder of intentional, uh, creativity, um, Shiloh Sophia is just amazing how she's brought this concept of intentional creativity out into the world. And what it does is it, it's like, almost like a vehicle for magic to happen. It is with art because I really feel it. I feel that magic happening when I practice intentional creativity. It's yep. like amazing. Yep. And um, that being able to share that with other people is such a gift it to be is. able to invite people into that space where that magic happens. Um, and that reminds me that I wanted to talk a little bit about the concept of holding space. Yeah, so yeah. holding and creating space for something magical to happen. Yeah, um, great topic. And it ties into intentional creativity. Part of what we do is called a red thread ceremony or a red thread icebreaker. And we create it's, well, there's, a, there's an ancient Chinese proverb that says everyone who is destined to meet is connected by an invisible red thread. And this thread may stretch or tangle, but it will never break. And so whoever comes together for whatever intentional creativity project that we're going to do somehow is meant to be together. And maybe you're supposed to meet somebody that's there. So we, we create the actual container and, 
and ask a couple of questions and we go around the room so that everybody's seen and heard, right? So that's the first part of the creating space. And for the intentional creativity process itself, it's a step-by-step -step method. So again, it's, it's about these creating within containers. And so I might say, make a mark that feels like happiness, right? Just make a mark. It doesn't need to look like a thing. Pick a color that feels like the future. So it's very organic and simple. And those who are not comfortable doing art can do exactly what I say, right? They can follow me step by step. Those who are already creative and used to using the mediums or whatever, they are free to roam within the container, right? And there's a ton of room within that container. And so what that allows people to do is to feel again safe in that they can be guided or they can be expressive and not I've got a big thing about being repressed, right? Because I unintentionally was, and freedom is super important to me. So it's this balance, you know, between the two in this in this space. And of course, I ask everyone to respect each other, and you know, what happens here stays here, and that kind of things. And if laughter is welcome, dancing is welcome, and tears are welcome, it's all part of the process. Yeah. And so you have created these containers and these kind of spaces for transformation, both in person and now online, right? Can you tell us a little bit about the difference, um, yeah. what you've experienced with that? What a, what a great question. Yeah, so pre-pandemic, pre I was doing everything in person, which was pretty much local. I was doing corporate team building. I would do some, some public workshops. I was working with school teachers and school administrators. The theme, but through all of it, was resilience building, self-care, releasing blocks. And when all that stuff, is like the blocks are gone and the fears are gone, then there's this literal space within you that you have clarity and you can allow clarity to come in and get the vision on how you want to go forward. So in the physical sense, it was easy because I could see where everybody was with their, their work easy and hard. I could see where everybody was with their work. I could feel the energy of the room. You can hear each other, right? So you can, the senses are different, but I also had to schlep everything there and set it up. And so it was much more laborious for me to, to run a workshop. Well, that all went away. So I was like, all right, I'm going to reinvent. And as it just turned out, everything lined up for using three other methods of self-discovery in, in addition to intentional creativity, which weaves it all together. And all these projects I had been creating over the last eight years, I could put together into this five month curriculum that meets every other week. It's very light curriculum and very experiential. So that, you know, that's why we meet every other week. So you can still have life. And what the difference was at first is I couldn't see anybody what they were working on. So now we have a, a work around around that. We have a plan where everybody gets two, two of the Zoom screens and then the cell phone can point down on top of the work. It's very simple. So that helped with that. And yet you, the, it's just a different way to, to read the room, you know? And so I ask everyone, please have your video on, please talk, please communicate with me because I am not the kind to just stand up in the, center, the front of the room and teach. Yes, I teach, but I really call it guiding. I walk with people, which is why it is self-discovery. It's not about me telling anyone anything. It's about me asking the questions and creating and giving the, creating and giving the container for the discovery to happen within that. The self-discovery wisdom school. Yes. yes. That is the, the name of this container, this program, this yeah. online yeah. course that you are working on currently. Yes. Um, you touched on something that I wanted to ask you about, which is um, expression and freedom of expression and how expressing yourself is so healing and doing so through art is so healing. So tell, tell me about your thoughts on that. Well, in my humble opinion, <laughs> I think that the beauty in all of us is in our uniqueness, right? It's that that fly your freak flag, be the weirdo. And I'm kind of kidding when I say that, but really in the things that make us different is what makes us so special and what makes the world interesting. And when you know what those things are and have confidence in them and you can see how they benefit you, you can be a very different person in the world, right? Because 
you know it's not even only okay it's actually excellent to be like that Mom. yeah i think that bringing out your true self and discovering aspects of your true self that you were not aware of can be so healing and i remember um when i was doing creative arts therapy with people that are in uh, recovery so uh, people that are recovering from alcoholism and addictions and stuff. And I would do creative arts therapy with them. And I, you could just see it and feel it when yeah. they would express themselves. It was like opening up a bottle that uh, just yeah. needed to be released. And it was so healing for them. You could see and feel that healing happening Yes. right in front of you is so powerful um and i think that it's something that we all need to do it to be healthy psychologically is to express ourselves of who we are yeah. so in my humble opinion <laughs> my feeling is that um you know people people talk about what they're put on the earth to do and this is my purpose and that's my purpose and I really feel like our purpose is to express ourselves, whoever we are yes. in the moment and to be able to express ourselves like freely. Um, and it's, it's, it's like a powerful psychological um, phenomenon to be able to express yourself. Yeah, uh, our brain shift. Our brains literally make a shift when we're in what I'll call our, our flow of creating whatever we're creating in the way that we're creating it. And, you know, you, you might get endorphin rush even because of it, right? Because it really is the shift. And every time, even in as short as a half an hour, people might go from tense, you know, and life is crazy to just this whole different demeanor of being just, you know, a notch more relaxed, if not more after us, the simplest project. So that alone yeah. is healing on our day-to-day -day stresses of life, you know? Yes. That's one thing that I used to, um, focus on was helping people make that shift when they're doing creative arts therapy from the left side of the brain, which is so analytical and critical and necessary but in our society it's like completely taken over this left side critical side of the brain mm -hmm. and helping people to shift into the right side the more creative fluid emotional feeling yeah. side of the brain and let me tell you it's such a relief after being in that critical uh, anxiety ridden <laughs> left side all the yeah. time. People yeah. are like, woo, I feel so good. Yeah, I'd like to touch on that a little bit more because I think you really hit on something super powerful. And there's this space between wanting to control everything, including our art or our creative process, right? And we're built like that. A lot of us are built more like that than others. I used to be really built like that and I'm not so much anymore because I've done it so much now. But if you can allow yourself to let the mistakes happen, quote mistakes, right, happen, they often can turn into something else that has an insight for you. And then if you really allow yourself to go into that space of no expectations on what's going to happen, I call it the seemingly magical moments happen. Because you don't know what's going to happen. And because you're not controlling and holding on tightly, there's room for something else to come in that can be actually life-changing in a moment, right? It can be healing, it can be life-changing, it can be an answer that you've been searching for for so long, it can be an idea, it can be all kinds of things. Yes, and it's because the intuition lives on that right side of the brain. And so when we're getting out of the left and into the, the right side of the brain, it's like you're saying, it opens up this space for this wisdom to come through and yeah. that's what it's all about right the yes. self-discovery wisdom school yes and you chose fear right as one of your fearless as which takes bravery to be fearless right and so that's a fearless process 
So allow yourself to go into that. I'm curious, I, why, you, why did you choose fearless in your group? Oh my goodness. Um, so over 40, fearless and free. Yes. I wanted women to realize that being over 40 was actually a benefit and not like this negative thing. So I wanted to help women to see that um, number one, when you're over 40, we have all of this life wisdom and experience and we are past the age a lot of times of having children, we might be divorced. And you know, these things have been looked at as negative, but if you flip it, you realize that, wow, I have all of this time now to do whatever I want with it. So there's that element of freedom, you know, so over 40 fearless and free. And I wanted to help women to embrace this time mm. uh, and really jump into it and become fearless and powerful because it's it's when when we shed these fears and when we realize that these things that we thought were so scary well guess what we made it through you know we made it through deaths we've made it by this age we've made it through um divorces you know all of our huge fears and the more we experience all these things, we realize that they are not scary anymore. And we are, we are becoming fearless. So to me, fearless is like a point that is, um, we're probably never completely fearless, but we're always moving towards fearlessness because we're shedding all of these fears as we go along. Yeah. And I always think that there's one big question to address that what's the worst thing that can happen right and i know that's how i got past a lot of my own fears what's the worst thing that can happen and then i would think about it well is that actually really even going to happen and the chances were like this big right so why am i giving all of that energy to this much of a chance of it happening yeah yeah that's always helpful too <laughs> for sure looking at, the, looking at the reality of it right <laughs> the reality is that we've faced things that were similar already you know yeah yeah we are far more fearless than we even give ourselves credit for it's yeah. so true one <laughs> of the one of the projects that we do in the the school is they're called um they're called soul, soulful wisdom cards and they're about identify, identify goodness identifying your limiting beliefs and then figuring out the antidote to that and then turning those into affirmation cards, picking a card once a week and going out in the world and finding out where there's actually proof of the opposite of that fear is. It's a pretty fun exercise and a fun project to create as well. I am just so excited to hear about some of the different aspects of this, this course that we're gonna get into a little bit more, but there are a couple other things I wanna ask you about um, and, and one of them has to do again with fearlessness. Okay. And I know a little bird told me that one, something that you are really interested in is uh, traveling in the world. So you have traveled to many worlds through your creativity, but you also want to travel the world yeah. and it's almost traveling is almost like a metaphor for this because you have to be somewhat fearless. You have to step outside your comfort zone. And you know what? I like to think of it as expanding our comfort zones because every time we take a little step out, we expand it a little bit more, right? Yep. So tell me your thoughts about traveling and some of the magical places that you would like to travel in the future. Oh, gosh. Well, any place with an island sounds good. <laughs> um, I definitely would like to go to somewhere like Machu Picchu. I like the history and the spiritual connection that's in a lot of places. And I traveled a lot in my youth, in my 20s. And then midlife between 30 and 50, I didn't. And so I really feel like I've got some time I need to, to make up. So that's why it's really top of mind for me now that I want to travel again. And really, it's the culture and the people. I just love getting to know 
the culture and the people. And, you know, we all are the same in terms of what we care about, our hearts, our families and all that, but I love the nuances of the differences. So not only just the beautiful locations, but I just really enjoy, again, that uniqueness. I really have something about loving to find the uniqueness in people. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And and it, it also speaks to your being a fearless woman um, in that you, have an interest in stepping outside and just continually learning and growing. And I think that especially when we travel, we are expanding ourselves and our own view of the world. Yeah. And in a way you help people travel to spaces in themselves that they are not uh, familiar with. and. And they have to step outside their comfort zone a little bit to do this intentional creativity work that you help them with. So I love that analogy. I love that. Yes, I agree with you. And I think it's like this, like with anything, when we have to step outside of our comfort zone, it's uncomfortable at first, right? So we stretch and we stretch, but if we do it a few times, then it's stretched out, right? And it's easier to expand. And then we get in to do a new stretch. And this is what I've done to myself over the years is I keep taking myself for whatever reason. And I think it's because I'm positivity runs through me. I see the world in rose covered glasses. I cannot help it. And so I always tend to see the bright side, which gives me some bravery, you know, of, of bouncing back. And I, am, and I am resilient at this point, but I do like to stretch because I think, well, why not? This is life. Let's experience it, you know? Absolutely. And you're helping people to experience life in such a new way, such a radically new way. I want to, well, I want to do two things. I'm going to share some things that people have said about your work, but um, yeah, maybe I'll do that first. <laughs> Let me do that first. Uh, you have had people say the most beautiful things about your work. For example, <clears throat> one of your students said that working on the project, sharing with others openly, feeling the comfort level rise with each person each week and just showing up authentically with no judgment was amazing. Carrie Lee needs to know how special this experience is. It was a great package, great value. Being in the group was fun. It felt natural, comforting, welcoming, and kind. Everybody was super awesome. The program is fantastic and getting much more value than I thought I would. It's amazing. So those are some glowing words from your students, uh, Carrie Lee. I think uh, I'm the lucky one. <laughs> I get to do this work. <laughs> yeah, and so, Tell us a little bit about what you want people to feel and experience from your, uh, from the course, from the wisdom yeah. school. What, yeah. what do you want them to feel? What I want them to feel is empowered. I want them to feel like they've got great, much greater clarity about how they can make decisions and the way that they are in the world, right? That feels really comfortable and they're really confident. So it's about clarity, confidence, and freedom. Um, and I want them to feel freer in themselves because of these new ways of being and experiencing their own life that they now have these tools and these insights um, that they can now tap into and use. And, you know, I just want to save people some of the time that I had to have to figure this out. And what I mean by that is I was 18, 19, needing to make a decision how I wanted to go forward in my life. And because I got off track of who I really was, I didn't know. So I went to school in graphic design. I got a D in ceramics. I couldn't pull through a pot for the life of me. And I couldn't draw realistically. I thought I can't be a graphic designer. That's not true, but I didn't know that. I got my degree in business. It didn't fit. I could do it capable human being, but it didn't fit. So I did that for a while. I went back to school, studied something else, went back out in the work world, still didn't fit like in my late twenties. 
And I was just like, what am I doing? But I didn't know what else to do, right? So then the kid, my daughter, my beautiful daughter comes in, raise her, spend my time more focusing on family. And then I get to the point where my implosion in life had to happen. So I needed to get myself like financially straight and do that kind of stuff. So I did the practical thing and thought, oh my gosh, is this all there is to life? Like there's gotta be a bigger, richer, more, just all I can say is more experience to life. And that's, and so that's when I made this decision. And then there's also like the ones who've just retired and they've done whether they loved it or not, they've done their, their quote work and they still have lots of life ahead. And maybe they wanna leave a legacy. Maybe they wanna find their own passion and purpose in a different way. So it's all these different phases of life that it's just a, a realignment of how you're experiencing life. So that's what I hope to do is just help people realign to really be in their own ease and their own joy and their own peace. And just to really, to get up in the morning and go, what do I get to experience today? Right? Yeah. And so in a way you're helping guide people back to themselves. Absolutely. Back to their true selves. And they get to have this rich, delicious experience of, of creativity that brings them back to themselves. Yes. And we're going to talk about some of the specifics of the course. But first, I want to share just a little bit about, you know, how I feel about this, because I feel so strongly about this course, because, you know, I, I led a course that was similar, it has some of the similar aspects to it. Um, not exactly the same, but in person and uh, you have brought this online so you're able to reach so many people and so many more people and i get to be a part of it by helping share your work with the world and yet i didn't have to create it so it's like, it takes so much work to get something like this online and it's such a beautiful course and you've created it and it's there and it's online and I get to be a part of it and I didn't have to do it. I'm just so thankful and like, thank goodness that this, it's like it exists and I get to share it. <laughs> so I just wanted to, to put that out there because, you know, I was getting almost teary eyed earlier and like almost very emotional about the fact that like, wow, I can share this and I didn't have to be build it myself so um yeah i just wanted to put that out there <laughs> it's such I, a thing. I understand that you know it's so funny because you were when we met you and i we knew at some point our paths were going to cross and we would sort of i'll say quote work together which maybe we will and maybe we won't but we all we both kind of always felt that alignment and i completely understand that how you feel like i don't have to do that and i actually feel the same way because yes, I have created the container of the school and the curriculum, but I have three other practitioners in three methods of self-discovery. I hold the intentional creativity part and the bigger school and the operations and all of that, but I don't have to have their expertise, right? I know what they do. I know how incredibly impactful it is. I understand it, but I don't need to know all the nuances of it. I couldn't do it if I had to know all all of it. Okay, now we really want to know. Tell us about the pieces <laughs> of it and the different practitioners that are involved. <laughs> okay, so um, we start off with three intentional creativity projects and they're to help everybody find their own inner compass because this is really a lot of it is wisdom that you already have that may just have gotten forgotten or pushed away or whatever. So there's something called touchstones which helps you find your three guiding words to make decisions in the, the moment. And it's based on your values and your desires. And it can change in three months, but we do this project called Touchstones. And all of them are art, you know, art based, right? And then we go on to the soulful wisdom cards, which are the turning limiting beliefs into empowering new stories. And um, I also, well, we do a, a cover, a journal cover, which I is a Kintsugi cover. It's the Japanese broken pottery with the gold. So it's in that style, but it's a journal cover. So we're just kind of warming up our creative muscles with that. And then in comes Liesl Treversham and she does strengths and talents. And what this is about is these are these strengths and talents that we were born with. We can do them if we're sick, if we're grumpy, if we're happy, it doesn't matter. And I'm not referring to if you're a good singer 
or a good cook or a good anything like that. What I'm referring to are these strengths and talents that we have that when we do them, we get energized by them, right? And because they give us energy and they feel fun and easeful, we want to do them more. And because we can do them more, because it's fun, we have the opportunity to master these things. So it really pinpoints what those are. We focus on your top five, and but we you learn all of them. I think there's, oh my gosh, I should know the number 34, I think total. And the ones that are not at the top, you can still do them. Because again, we have these intellectual capabilities to do things, but why do what drains you? So it's great clarity for how do you want to spend your time? And what do you have to give to the world? And what do you need from the world in return to energize you? Like, what should you be doing so that you're energized in your day-to-day -day tasks and how you give back, right? So one of mine is connectedness. I see connections between things that are not necessarily visible. This is all based on a scientific process. process. And that is how I was able to see the link between these methods. It's kind of like if you're running a relay race and you hand the baton off and there's that little cross point. So each of these methods crosses about that much that you can see how they relate, but they're completely different. So the strengths and talents is how you are out in the world, let's say. And then we go into human design. And human design is really about how you is best, it's instead of listening to your mind, it's listening to your body. And so how do you, are the, what's the best decision-making method for you? What's the best way to do self-care for yourself? Um, should you make decisions in an instant or should you wait? So it's really how your inside, right? I'll say your aura, if you're a person who's into the aura, is your aura inward, how that works for you best. And then we go into something called Mayan dream spell. And then that's with Sandy Frieshi that we do the human design. And then the, the Mayan dream spell with Stephen Henderson, that one is super interesting because that is, it's based on birth information. And it is about your, the energy of your, your light behaviors or your light bot. So it's your shadow self and your, and your, um, your light self, or your, I'm going to call it your not best self or your best self. And what I mean by that is really when you're in your own flow or when you're out. And so he helps you discover what behaviors and thoughts and patterns you have when you're in your flow. And that really is when life is going great. And we all know when life's going great, but we may not know how we got there, right? And then we all know when we're pulled out of it because we go to some other place. For me, it's frustration. If I feel frustration, I absolutely know that I need to stop and reevaluate what's going on. And then I know how to course correct. That's the big one to actually know how to go. Because before I would just as I'm being my self-discovery junkie, right? I would just kind of go back and forth and not really understand how I got from one place to the other. So again, for me, it is so simple. I just need to stop and be present. Like, don't worry about the future. I mean, this is good for all of us. Don't worry about the past and take a very conscious breath. Relax my body. We're all different. This is my specific formula. Um, so that's pretty, that's the, that's the really the inner workings of your own thoughts, I'll say. And then the other part that's really cool about what he does is he does something called the familial lineage. And that's looking at the 10 relationships that are closest in your, um, your life, the most significant relationships. And it evaluates the impact they have on you. So that's your ecosystem, your inner circle. And maybe there's some unintentional parts of it that have held you back, kind of like the childhood story we talked about earlier. Right, so it looks at that. And when you can look at all these different perspectives, I say it's like an MRI versus an X-ray, then that really gives this whole new light of how we are. If I could just keep going for one second. Um, I wanna ask one question. Yes. <laughs> at some point, tell us about the uh, creative projects that they're doing while they're while they're learning these things. Yeah, thank you for that question. Yeah, so, so the way it works is that it's a combination of individual and group sessions. So we meet in group and that's how we form community and everybody starts to really share. And by sharing, of course, we learn from each other and these friendships build and all of that. And boy, do we need community right now, especially, right? And you can have community online. So then they go off on what I call individual quests. So it's in the spirit of a cruise ship. 
right? You get on the cruise ship and we're going to go on this cruise together, but then they're going to go off on these individual quests or excursions with the, the various practitioners and they're going to get their very individual information. And then we all come back in group and I created, have created these art projects based on what they've learned that helps them integrate the learnings into a visual piece. And there's a gallery on my website if anybody's curious what these look like. And it's fun. It's relaxing. It gets you in that other part of your brain. But again, you're learning this stuff. And then over the two weeks, you can go out there and start to notice it and experience it and have these art pieces to look at, to re keep yourself refreshed of, oh yeah, go back to that, go back to that. Um, and then we have some other art projects as well that, that ties everything together. But it's, it's just the, it's the element that adds, I think, a lot of fun. It really integrates it and it really weaves it all together in a completely different experience than if you went off and did one of the things, right? Because anybody can go off and do one of them, but it's that slice where we're looking at this holistic, creative, different perspective of ourselves. I, I don't know if it's possible for us to share the screen and show them some of this, do you think? Yeah, sure. You want me to open it up? Yeah, I, I tried to get the sharing screen permissions out there. Let's see if it worked. Let's see if we can do it. All right. Let me just open my website here. And as I'm doing that, I'll just talk about the experience a little bit. And that is that it's not a it's not a heavy experience. You know, we're not out there digging trenches. The way I like to put it is imagine you are a butterfly. Okay, you're a butterfly of metamorphosis and you're out there in this garden that's been your life for your entire life. And um, when all of this information comes in, it's kind of like it goes from a misty garden to the light field garden. And all of a sudden you can see deeper into the flowers that have been growing for years, right? You can see into them and see them differently. And yet you're this butterfly that gets to fly around and explore. So that's sort of the, the feeling of the experience. We are not digging the ditches to create the garden. We're, we're just looking at it from a different perspective. All right. I love that metaphor of the butterfly. And I also love the cruise ship metaphor. Yeah, well, it is what it's like. So, okay, so you want to see the projects? Yeah, show us whatever you want to show. Share. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the one that goes into the, the Mayan dream spell. That is the one that's about your shadow and your light. It's mainly your thoughts and behaviors. And we created what I call your um, your starseed shooting star. And this process, everybody, again, I give them the same directions, but everybody does it in the way that's unique to them. So just like us, we are all very different and these all look different. They all have different information journaled on them. So they're very fancy journaling pages. A lot of these actually got framed. I hung mine up, this one is mine. I hung mine up in my bathroom wall so I can go back and refer to it all of the time. And this part right here was really big for me allow myself to feel out of balance to realign. So when I'm in that funky space of feeling out of balance and just, you know, that how we get, I can know that actually what I'm doing is realigning. It is a very different way to experience that moment. Instead of like, ah, I got to fix it. I got to fix it. It's just like, it's going to change and it does. And then I'm realigned. Beautiful to know that. Um, so that is the, got to move some of these windows around. That is the Mayan dream spell. For the human design, we create an altar and it is so that you can put your flowers, your candles, your rocks, whatever it is that's meaningful to you to collect and create this little sacred space for yourself that's all about you. And these talk about what your energetic superpower is. So this one says, I'm a builder and sustainer of things that make life worth living. And then how she feels in the satisfaction, how she feels or when she's in the flow, which is satisfaction for this person, how she feels when she's out of flow, her self-care strategies, her body's process for making the decisions that are right for her, both short-term and long-term. There's another person's. This one, she got super creative. She made hers into a wall hanging instead, which is great. Um, so that is that project. There's the, the journal cover. I won't go too far into that. And these are the touchstones that I talked about that are your three guiding words based on your current values and desires. These are the soulful wisdom cards that turn your limiting beliefs into your empowering new stories. And then um, 
this is the strengths and talents one. And we break it down into these symbolic shapes where there's the receiving hand and the giving hand, and you list your five, top five um, strengths and talents. We look at the core talent of what runs through pretty much everything. This is mine, positivity. And we look at, some people have a spiritual talent, some don't. We look at our ignition talent, which is the thing that really energizes you when you see it happens. I love synchronicity. So when I see the connectedness of things, that gets me just all excited and I wanna keep hunting. There's a guilt theme. That may have been the things that you were given guilt about during your life and they're just who you are. So you can get learn some grace from that for yourself, right? There's the relaxing thing. This is the thing that you can do to relax yourself. I'm super adaptable. So knowing that I'm adaptable relaxes me into a situation because I know I can pivot pretty quickly, right? So it's just those kind of things. There's your out breath, which is your main contributions to the world and your in breath, which is your main needs from the world. We do some action steps on for yourself and what you have to give out there. We write a poem about it. We you list them. I'm so excited back. about this, Carrie Lee. I know, I love it. it I mean, this <laughs> This is literally my life's work. It's, you know, I'm all, excited yeah. about it because it's so overlapping with what I did. So much of it is similar and it's so exciting to see that you, you know, pulled it all together and made yeah. it into a program. It's so beautiful. Well, I have to say shelter at home was a blessing for me in that sense, because it forced me to change the way I do things and to put it together differently. I don't know if I would have, this would have happened without being forced to honestly. This is the, one of the final projects and it's a mandala map. It's your personal symbol. So no, no um, compasses or rulers allowed except for to find the middle of the page because we are not like a compass. We are lumpy and bumpy and lopsided, right? And so every layer of the mandala has symbolic meaning to the person who drew it. So I ask a series of questions based on all of their discoveries that they've learned through the, the course. And then they put them together into these mandalas. And what's super fun is one of the women, she made quote, a mistake. And she's like, oh no, I did this one wrong. But she knew by then, go with it. And by the time she had finished doing it, like in a meditative state almost around her mandala, she's like, I know what this means, right? So that's those magical moments. So uh, that's basically the projects. Um, let's see if there's anything else to tell you about specifically. Well, there's, there's a schedule in there. It starts, the next session starts May 1st. Um, there's the course content, which is um, some, it's sort of in depth about what we talked about the methods are. At the bottom are some bonuses that are added. I even have one more bonus that's gonna come up soon that everybody's gonna get. There's no extra fee for it. It's called rapid transformation therapy and it's gonna be focused on all these methods. Um, if anyone wants, thinks they're interested and wants to have a call with me, there's a link in there. We can do a 20 minute free info session, strategy session to see if it's a fit. I don't know, poke around, take a look. <laughs> well, I, I love the aspect of the kind of lumpy and bumpy part that you were talking about. Yeah. And how everybody, you know, doesn't, they don't need to be perfect through this. I think that that's something that stops people from getting involved in creativity or anything creative is they think it has to look a certain way. And uh, I remember that one of your um, former students was saying how much they appreciated the lightness that you bring to the whole thing. And the fact that you are able to hold the space so lightly um, that it allowed them to just relax and kind of um, enjoy themselves and, and to be part of the program. Right. Well, what is perfection? And like, is it even possible? I don't personally think it's even possible. I don't think it's possible. And so I come in this where I'm literally walking next to everyone. I learn along the way too. Every time I'm learning, you know, I'm two steps ahead in many things, right? Like I know what door is going to open next, but I think that's part of the holding this space that we were talking about easier. I mean, earlier is that I'm just as human, as real as everyone. I've just walked this path. And so I just want to polish up some of the stones for people who want to experience their own. Yeah, one of your former students, I've got the, the quote in front of me 
It says the self-discovery wisdom school really changed me, making me more confident, creative, and positive in the way that I navigate life. And that's super powerful, Carrie Lee. I mean, that's amazing. They, uh, another person says, let me see here. I'm aware of what has been holding me back and I'm finally awake to new possibilities for growth. I really needed the interaction and coaching to make, make things happen. It was inspiring having the discovery work and the artwork intertwine. So it all enhanced the personal work and discoveries. Would absolutely without hesitation recommend anyone to take this school program because it's life-changing. So that that's just, you can't get more powerful testimony than that from your former students. That's fantastic. I hope my former students are saying that about me because <laughs> that is beautiful. I am just like, I'm kind of speechless to be honest with you. Like I saw the vision of it. I had the intention, the hope for it, but to have this happen. And here's what really happened is that this is gonna be the second session that we're offering now. So September was the first one. We come to the end of it and they say, we don't wanna leave. We don't want this to be done give us yeah. more. And I was like, what? Give you more? So yeah. we've, cre we've created the next level that I'm calling the living lab. And we really are focusing on synchronicity and how all of these learnings, they can become more aware in the way their life is flowing in terms of synchronicity. And it's so fun. And every single one of them moved on to that. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Except I'm just like so great. Yeah, but, I had, it's but I had to go through all the stuff I had to go through right to get here and to get to do this work with people and to do it right next to them and have fun I mean I get to do art for crying out loud I can do art you know um and help people I mean who doesn't want to help people I felt my corporate career didn't really make a difference to be honest with you not in an important ways and I needed to do something that I felt was making a, a difference in the world well, I think that we're all super grateful that you are doing this work and I'm just really excited to be involved and uh, I think that everybody knows that if I put something on my website and offer it as part of my platform that I really believe in it. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be involved as well. So share with people how to get in touch with you, how to, when the school starts again, how to get in touch, how to enroll, how to get more information. Yep. The easiest way is to go to the, web, the website, theselfdiscoverywisdomschool.com. And there is a link on, I think it's actually on the enrollment page that if you want to book a call with me to, to talk, but I, hopefully you'll see a lot of information, the schedule, the curriculum, try to be pretty comprehensive about what is there. Um, but that's the easiest way. I'm super approachable. Send me an email, you know, reach out. Um, it's, we'll put you know, the it's, link in the show notes as well. Okay, to great. The Self-Discovery School. But the exact URL is? Is the selfdiscoverywisdomschool.com. It's long. Okay, but. beautiful. <laughs> and this is Carrie Lee. Yes. So you can also find her, Carrie Lee, the alchemical artist. Yeah. Um, you can find her by uh, searching for Carrie Lee, the alchemical artist. Yeah, you can yeah. also find her in the group. So I encourage everybody to reach out and make friends with Carrie Lee just because she is a wonderful person to have in your life. So reach out and make friends with her. Any questions you can ask her you know, private message her, email her, drop her a line. Whatever works, yeah. whatever works. I'm very accessible. Yeah. And put all that information in the show notes. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and sharing your energy, your expertise, uh, your wisdom, all of it with us. We're so grateful, uh, Carrie Lee. Is there anything you'd like to kind of leave us with any thoughts before we close? Um, well, I wanted to say thank you for, you know, your endorsement. And it, I just love it because it's been years in the making, you know, and so <laughs> I, I'm just so grateful for you for recognizing this and being so in alignment with it, with your own work.
I mean, immediately, it was really wonderful. And I guess I just want to say to everyone is, if not now, when, you know, right? And time. <laughs> yeah, um, that's really all I want to say is if not now, when? And what's holding yeah. you back? And is it really holding you back? You know, that's that butterfly uh, metaphor, you know, and it's time for it, that butterfly to fly. <laughs> and it's probably easier than you think. That's the other thing is it's actually